Welcome back to Games Revealed. I'm James Lenos Brink, and we are one community. Today, I want to talk about something that is going to be a game changer for handheld devices. And yes, it's not necessarily new tech, but it has been, some of the tech has been used in the past like six months or was announced. FSR 3. Now, that's not what we're going to talk about fully. FSR 3 is, is good and interesting, but FMF, which is Fluid motion frames from AMD is what we're going to talk about. And I think this is going to be the game changer, especially if they keep on iterating off this type of enhancements to our experience. So th this is very exciting and it could really spell the end of, will my device be able to run this game? It, if adapted to the Steam Deck, which <laughs> that's a big if, and we'll talk about that a little later, Potentially, it could just make it so that everyone just wants to get a Steam Deck because it will play everything and do it at a, a decent performance level and battery levels. It's very promising. So before we get into it, make sure to like, subscribe, bash that bell with your crowbar. Now we can, we can continue this little discussion. So Asus has recently released a series of updates to its ROG Ally and is planning on a big update that includes AMD fluid motion frames to help boost the graphics capability on the Ally. So... Very soon on the ROG Ally, you're going to be able to try out FMF. And I've heard from a great source, and I've also uh, toyed around with this, that it performs well. It, it, like, depending on the games, like I haven't tried it on a lot of games, but it it can really bump up your frame rate. So the technology is more for like, if, especially if, it's, if we're talking about FSR3, it's more for going from like 60 to 120. It helps fill in those frames with predictive analysis. And so it's pretty cool. It has some hesitance. It's not as good as it gets lower. So if you're say you're trying to get 60 frames and it's, you know, performing at 10 frames, you're going to get a lot of weird artifacting. And artifacting usually occurs with this type of thing when the predictive algorithm doesn't fill in that next frame properly. So let's say you have one character not um, moves a little too much in, from, you know, in that 10 frames and it's trying to fill in an extra 50, it's going to be very weird and probably jumpy with the image. It's not really designed for that. It's designed for higher, but if we can, and I, I've, from what I've seen, if it's 30, 40, where our eyes start to not notice it as much, the artifacts, and if it's a smaller jump that you're looking for, then it's pretty good. So my hope is if it's tw if you're getting like 25, 20, and it, and it can fill in just a little bit more, and this is a big if, and that's why I say this is an iterative piece, is this could solve the Steam Deck not being able to play the newest games, hopefully. that Like I said, though, if the game's running at 10 frames and you're trying to bump it up to 30, that's a lot of asking of the algorithm to fill in from my understanding on this. Now you can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but that's for my research and from my experience, that's what it seems like. It really helps smooth out the experience more than correct very high demanding games. So I was a little wrong in the beginning of this, like with the Steam Deck, it's not going to make every game playable, but between FSR2 and a lot of these other techs coming out and some other hardware maybe with Steam Deck 2, this could be the end of an era will it play on this handheld device. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to make it look like a 4K god of a game, but it still is a great start. How AMD kind of defines this is it is a frame generation technology designed to increase frame rates and smooth movement for a smoother gaming experience. It works by analyzing two existing frames and generating a new frame in between them. This can effectively double your frame rate, making games feel much smoother and more responsive. So if you're getting 10 frames per second, you can double that to 20. If you're getting 20, you can hopefully double that to 40. That's why I'm saying most games on the Steam Deck, if you play around with the settings well enough and you choose a lot of different settings, can run about 20 frames uh, a second. And so if you double that to 40, that's awesome, right? That's, that's about where we want to be. So... It's very promising, and it works really well on the ROG Ally. So I haven't tr like I have not tried anything like this out on the Steam Deck. I know there's mods and stuff like that, and it looks janky. But the ROG Ally, because it's you know it's a Windows device, the AMD drivers are there. It's already be like there's beta drivers for this or alpha drivers for this technology for the FMF specifically. 
it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out. So 2024, uh, keep an eye out this year because I think this is the year where we solve the problem of low frame rates and performance bottlenecks for most games. Now, once again, like I said, if it's very unperformant in like 10, like I wouldn't expect a ten, like an average 10 FPS game to benefit from this just because I think bumping it up to 20 and it's guessing is just not going to be very well with this algorithm. So now, where is it? You can currently get the beta. It's the Adrenaline Edition driver, AMD's drivers, that is. You can use it on the R- the Radeon RX 6000 and 7000 series graphics cards, which, if there's an APU that incorporates that tech, which the uh, Z1 Extreme does on the Ally, then you can use it there, too, with some fooling around. And it works pretty good. Most games will run well on this, and the difference w- between... FMF also than FSR3 um, is that FSR3 needs in-game support for this. It needs to be turned on and I believe mapped properly. FMF does not need that. It will, it should when it comes out, be able to do it itself to generate everything and to do this predictive analysis. FSR3 is a little different. So FSR3 needs built-in support from the game. FMF does not. So that's a big game changer. So your old games should benefit from this too. Um, here are some of the benefits of FM, um, of FMF, increased frame rates, uh, reduced input lag, and improved image quality. Um, and specifically with improved image quality, it uses advanced algorithms to generate new frames that are as close as, as the original frames as possible. This means you should not see any significant artifacts or visual glitches. You should not. But like I said, on lower frame rates, it could be different. Okay, and then here, are, you know, like, this is all promising, right? This is very, like, everyone's like, okay, this is awesome. This is perfect. This is going to be, like, the best thing ever. Well, th- you know, when you get in so much for free, there's drawbacks. There's going to be cons to this. And so the drawbacks for FMF are increased input latency. While FMF can help to reduce input lag, in some cases can also increase it in others. This is because the process of generating new frames takes time. And then this is this is like a hypothetical. If your device is already struggling and you're hitting that max frames already, it could struggle and add some delay for input latency. So like when you're using controllers and stuff like that, or just any input, right? Keyboard, mouse, controllers, and handheld gaming device sphere. Reduced image quality. In some cases, FMF can inter- introduce artifacts or visual glitches into the image. This is more likely to happen if you're using FMF with older games or games that are not well optimized for it. So it still looks like there needs to be some optimization. And uh, I believe, like with the Steam Deck, there's ghosting with the UI. Um, I, but I, that might have been with FSR 3. I think they're very similar techs. Uh, it's just FMF is trying to be work for everything where FSR 3 is built specifically. It'll be interesting to see how this all goes. Now, it's not compatible with all games. FMF is only compatible with DirectX 11 and 12 games. It will not work with older games or games that use other graphics APIs. So, that's not a big deal, honestly. Anything that doesn't support uh, DirectX 11 is most likely, like, if it's DirectX 10, 9, if it's an older game, it's most likely going to either work or not work with the current tech anyway. So if it's on Windows 11, if it's on Steam OS, it's most likely going to work on those devices where it's in the sense of it's going to be very performant because it's super old and it doesn't use any really weird antiquated APIs in its its game. So most if, if, if the old game works well enough on your Steam Deck, um, it's most likely going to perform really well and would not benefit. FMF is really going to help you in games that are newer and more demanding as it will increase the, the, the frame rate. Now what you've been waiting for, does it work on the Steam Deck? Not officially. I think there's some mods or some stuff kind of looking into this. And don't mind, if you can hear my dog, he's, he's just super excited that this will hopefully be on the Steam Deck. Now, there are talks about it being on the Steam Deck, but there's some limitations with the AMD RDNA 2-based GPU or portion of the APU. There's some limitations. So it will have to be custom-filled for the SteamOS, that is, and that's hardware. Community's requesting a lot for it, open source potential. Since the source code for FSR 3, and another AMD upscaling technology has been released. Some speculate that adapting FMF for the deck might be feasible, especially since... If it's open source, which I believe, yeah, the source code's going to be there. Valve's working with AMD already. 
And so there's a good chance that they can work out their own solution with this. It'll be interesting to see if it's more baked into a custom driver suite or baked into the SteamOS itself. There's a lot that, you know, we can speculate all day, but we'll see. The technical challenges, though, is that the hardware and software would require uh, specific workarounds due to its different architecture. Optimizing and integrating it would present challenges. Depends on how much of that different hardware and changes that would need to, to occur. Let's say if there's a couple of spots that it requires an API for the newer hardware, then it could, you know, if it's just a few spots, maybe it's going to be easy, else it could be hard. We don't know. But it's definitely, it seems feasible. And I bet you Valve is working really uh, hard to look into this because this could really help bump a lot of games' performance and could really, really elevate the Steam Deck's role of like not being deprecated, not getting old. If they released something that had FMF support and it bumped most games up by almost uh, double in the performance realm uh, with very little cost to performance and battery, I could see this being really high on their list of like wanting to look into. Once again, a lot of feasibility questions here, and I don't want to get too technical with it. I do have more technical notes here, but we're not going to get too technical. This has already been too long. I just want to let you know, guys, that the future is promising. 2024, I think, is when we're going to be getting some promising updates on FMF and doubling our performance on a, a lot of games, hopefully, on the Steam Deck and on these other devices. Now, we know for sure that the Ally is going to get this, and some of the Windows handhelds are going to get it, and with it will, you know, decrease performance of battery, so maybe we can start, like, really getting, like, huge increases of better battery life and still having, like, let's say 40, 50 frames per second on the Ally there's a lot of potential this year. So let's keep an eye out. Let me know in the comments if you're excited for something like this. What do you think? Do you think FMF is overhyped? Have I overhyped it? I'm always excited for everything. So I'm curious to see what you think. Check out my other links down in the description below, including coffees and all that other stuff that's uh, tasty and good down there. And once again, thank you for watching. Peace out. Later!